I made a video a little while back about improving my Tesla coil and I wanted to put more voltage in it and I got this response from Todd if it works you're on the right track now a few million volts per meter should do it that's a swift kick to the boys yeah look I'm not disagreeing with him at all uh, the weight itself is a lot to lift but what if there's a different way what if Alexi already built it in and you didn't realize it was there and it has to do with the resonance of the craft we don't understand it properly and it's because a lot of people look at it as circuit resonance and they misunderstand the meaning they want to look at which is resonance as vibration or as a multiplication of vibration so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple different things there's two videos here that are included in this and they go over exactly what we want to look at let's see if this is what Alexi was trying to use in this craft in order to nullify the effect of putting millions of volts into something because to be honest with you we're going to end up like this guy on the screen right here and there's no chance in this world that I'm going to go ahead and put that many volts into anything nor should you so let's find the other way let's look at resonance and there's a difference between a resonance frequency and a resident frequency and when you see the resident frequency please understand piezoelectric disc we have three plates not just two but the center one and the upper one is where we're going to get our two resonance frequencies and then we're going to get our piezo to give us our resident frequency so let's get into the first one and we'll look at moving weight by vibration the second one deals with the resonance and the resident frequency I had some people ask what does resonance have to do with anti-gravity well this right here is obviously not anti-gravity however resonance does play a role or in this case a smaller amount which would just be vibration can we move heavier objects with vibration and if so why is it working 519 pounds being moved with three fingers with a pressure now this isn't about how strong you are or anything like that it's about what the vibration causes to things on the ground so if you vibrate something it's not going to weigh less but the effect gravity has on it is going to be less and it has something to do with more than just the vibration itself some people would say that everything is charged and as everything is charged so is the ground and as the item touches the ground based on the weight it pulls harder to it some people would say it's gravitational waves as the waves come down it creates pressure pressure is created on top of everything and it pushes down so why would vibration mess with both of these things the simple answer is the vibration is not allowing the force to compound on the item it's not a constant pressure by going on and off on and off or vibrating it allows the pressure to displace so that you can push this thing with three fingers if you're talking in gravitational waves it would mean that maybe less of the gravitational waves are actually getting the pressure put on this to force it down less waves less pressure maybe it might work either way we're seeing the fact that vibration messes with weight so what happens when you resonate something well resonating something is just like vibration except for it's 10 to 100 times stronger than vibration could be so if vibration is displacing this 500 pounds then what do you think it's going to do if you can amplify the amount of vibration well it should displace it even more and what does that mean if you have gravitational waves coming down then it should disrupt more of those if you're just trying to unstick yourself from the earth then massive vibration would allow you to do that easier this is a concept in anti-gravity in order to make something appear like it weighs less 
However, it does not ever change the weight of the item at all. So how would we use this in an anti-gravity device? Well, most people would understand that if you put millions of volts into something, you could probably get it to lift because you're matching some of the energy from the Earth. None of us are going to put millions of volts into anything. Let's just be very clear about that. None of us are even going to try it. But we will try to put resonance in everything that we do when it comes to anti-gravity because we want to disrupt any gravitational waves coming down. That way we don't have to put as much energy into something in order to get this thing to lift. It means that we can use a far lesser value in whatever propulsion method that we need by simply creating resonance in it. So about now you're asking yourself, okay, if this is a magical thing that happens, how do we get to it? How do you create resonance in something? Well, it's a little harder than you might even think it would be. You have to take the value of something. It's not just one to one. It's not one frequency to one thing. Every time that something resonates, there's a multitude of frequencies. You're going to have to decipher which of those is the highest value of frequency when amplified, not which is the highest peak that you see when you start something, but which one can amplify the highest. This comes to a different understanding. When you take horses on a bridge, there's always signs certain places that you cannot take them on a bridge. It's not because they don't like horses. It's because their hooves, hoofs make a certain sound. Repeated, repeated, repeated. What do you get? You get a lot of different frequencies coming up. But the one that has the highest value that can be amplified becomes the resonance frequency and it distorts and crumbles the bridge. That's why they don't allow horses on certain bridges. They know the frequency of the bridge, they know the frequency of the hooves, and then they take that and they don't allow it to happen. We see this when you have too many people stampeding on a bridge. You would get the same effect, though most engineers would compensate for this so that you would not, but it still would distort the bridge. In anti-gravity, we don't want anything to fix it. We want to amplify it. We want to find as much there as we possibly can to reduce as much weight as we possibly can in order to get a craft to lift on less weight. There's a lot of different ways to get a propulsion factor into a craft, but resonance is going to be one of the key things here. As we see, vibration changes the appearance of the weight. It doesn't change the weight itself. It changes how the world perceives the weight or how the fields themselves are blocked from that weight. That is the understanding of resonance. That is why it's needed in anti-gravity. Hopefully we can all start to understand this so we can build it in every craft that we come up to with anti-gravity. It is the only way to get around the amount of voltage necessary to lift something. Now I'm going to be honest with you right now. Resonance in itself is not going to get it done. I can just see Todd right now saying, get the million volts, you're going to be better off. Look, it's real simple. We need to amplify the resonance. And in order to do that, we're going to have to create a resident frequency. In order to do that, we're going to have to have two frequencies and then we're going to have to be able to pulse those two frequencies with something else. That way we can amplify the amount of resonance in it. A lot of people have created resonance inside of whatever they worked on in their project, but I can guarantee you there's less than one percent of the population that understands how to create the resonant frequency in something. If they could, Stanley Meyer's water car would be an easy experiment but since they can't, they, none of them can ever get it done. Resident frequency amplifies everything. Again, piezo buzzer right there is your amplification. That's your pulse wave. Your upper and middle disc are going to be your two frequencies. They're going to give you a resonance. Resonance 
Put in the piezo buzzer and pulse it. Resident frequency. The amplification of resonance. Let's get into the other video. I wanted to talk to you today about the difference between a resonant frequency and a resonance frequency. Two totally different things. Here's the definition. I will read it because I'm sure you probably can't see it on my screen here, okay? Resonant frequency is a natural frequency where a medium vibration at the highest amplitude, meaning it reaches its peak. That's resonant. Resonant is witnessed when an object reaches its equilibrium and forces it keeps vibrating for a long time under perfect conditions. Basically means two objects vibrating at the same time. Okay, not at their peak, not at their lowest value, but right there in the middle. Now, this is important. So we have our definition, right? We understand what it is. Let's get a practical application of it. This right here is resonance. We have one waveform, second waveform. It shows just exactly how it'll show on your oscilloscope. Resonance. Two objects vibrating in tandem. Now, what is a resident frequency look like? Just like this. Again, you have your resonance right here. Then you have a peak right here. That peak right there is, I don't want to describe this, it's one powerful wave, like a pulse. It just hits and it maximizes the energy from this pulse. So when we say it's a resonant frequency, it means that it has three parts to it. Resonance has two. It's important in how you see things and the way you build them. Now, what's a perfect example of this? We have pond and water. This would be like a resonance frequency. The frequencies go, they interact with each other at a medium level. What do we get when we have a resonant frequency? This is a resonant frequency. Here's the difference. Everything here isn't just going in simple waves. It's amplified in bunches of little spots everywhere. Not just in the one wave you would see here, but everywhere. Choppy water, basically what you would call it when you're in the water, choppy water. That is a resonance fre resident frequency, sorry. Resonance is the this one. Resident is the choppy water. So let's take a look at this again. This is the resident frequency of Stanley Meyer's water car. Notice that it's different than most people put into it. Most people put in a resonance frequency. This is resident frequency. Why is he getting so much more out of it? He's putting a lot more power into it as a multiplier. So when you get this frequency here, resonance with the two, resident with the peak. This right here is where he's creating it. Okay, right in these. It's very important to understand that. That's why most people fail in trying to build that experiment is because they're not understanding the difference. This right here is it. So what are we trying to create with a resonant frequency? Well, we're trying to create the Townsend effect. We want to multiply everything. And this is exactly what we're gonna do. When you hit it with the power, okay, at that peak right there, it brings in a cascading effect where it multiplies the effect. So you're looking at something when you have it at a resonance frequency, then you put it at a resident frequency, you're multiplying by factors of 10 to 1,000 when you do it. That's the Townsend effect. So I just wanted to talk to you about this in resident versus resonance frequency, if they understood it in ancient times. Well, this is ancient Egypt hieroglyph. I want to show you right here. Most people just focus in on this UFO right here. We're going to focus in right here. This is where we want to go. This is where they tell you they understood everything up front. You don't have to go far to see it. 
Again, this area right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it a little closer. We could see here, and I'll put a bit of picture in the video right here. We got the one wave form. Now we go down to the second image. Here you go. One wave, second wave. There it is. There's your multiplier peak right there. They knew exactly what a resident frequency was. They knew it back then. At least, what, 3,000, 5,000 years ago, maybe more. It's right there. It's not hiding from you. You just didn't know to look for it. Now that you know the difference between one or the other and why you need it, now you can understand it. Well, I know what you're thinking. That's a lot to take in, and it's a lot to go on a leap of faith. So do you have proof that you got to that state? Well, yes, I do. And I showed it many times out there, and people are not probably understanding it for what it is. So I'm going to show you a bit of testing, something you've seen before. But I'm going to explain it before I show you the testing. I'm going to put the gravity flyer in a vibrational state. It's going to have a small bit of vibration in it from where I set the motors. There's only one state that I can get this in when I run these speeds with these motors. So it's pretty easy to find. You just have to find the unbalanced part when you're setting these motors. Again, they're fan motors, they're not anything else. All right, so we get to the vibrational portion. The next step that's going to happen is the piezo buzzer itself, even though it was plugged in before, wasn't going off. Now it's going to. You're going to hear it start making that chirping sound. Now, that right there is going to put in our pulse wave that we need for a resident frequency. Understand that my upper disc and my middle disc have already been set with two frequencies. I am now adding the pulse to it. Now, what was the last thing? I needed to amplify the absolute frequency in that center plate that I needed. Again, it's the one that we can amplify the most. It's not the one with the biggest signal coming out in the beginning. It's the one that you can take and amplify the most. That's the one that you need. What you see is the energy picked up in the craft. You can see my feet in the video as I walk around. Understand this. I have produced more energy in the craft. You see the actual electricity in it pick up. You see the vibrational state pick up. I am into a resident frequency. There's always a question, did you amplify the right one? At this point, I amplified a really good one, and I think it's the right one. Could I be wrong? Yeah. Could there be more power there? Yes. But the simple fact is I hit a resident frequency in it and it gave me the understanding to see it that it gave me the power. It showed it to me right then and there. So let's take a look at the experiment one more time and let's understand it for what it is. We found the resident frequency in this craft. Just picked up a lot of energy as soon as I tapped that thing. Get back down a little bit. Now that we know what we're looking for and we know what the resident frequency is, please understand this is different between hitting different resonance points inside your center plate. I've seen a lot of people out there and a lot of gravity flyers. I watch every single one of the videos. As a matter of fact, I sit there and break them down. I want to know what they're getting in their craft and what their testing is doing. A lot of times when they have these things running, they'll hit a different resonance state. And every time the resonance state hits, it'll change the actual speed of the motors and everything else, and you'll get a different state going on. What they're not getting is the amplification of that energy as it gets into a resident frequency in that state. 
That's one of the biggest differences. I have never seen it in anybody else's craft. I've watched every video. Please understand I hit it here. So, do I need a million volts? No. Do I need to hit the correct frequencies in order to get something right? Yes. Am I going to have to deal with harmonics, octaves, everything to get it in that state? Yes. Is it worth it? A hundred percent. Is it the anti-gravity portion of every anti-gravity craft ever? And the simple answer is yes. Hopefully everybody learned something today. Hey, if you want to talk about this kind of stuff, we have a Facebook group. Uh, we do all the Gravity Flyer stuff, everything related to the Gravity Flyer. We have discussions on there. People have builds on there that they do for their Tesla coils. And they also have uh, circuits on there that I like to talk about, about the Gravity Flyer. So if you have any bit of information you want to share, that's a good place to do it. It's also a good place to have a discussion. The only thing I ask when you get on there is just be courteous to each other. And with that said, go ahead and talk about anything you want as long as it relates to the gravity flyer. I will leave the link in the description. And again, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things and have yourself a great day. Thank you.